Hi, I'm Erin Silva. I'm an Associate Professor and State Extension Specialist in Organic Agriculture at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. We're out here today at the UW Arlington Ag Research Station, which is about a 2,000 acre facility located in southern Wisconsin. We have about 100 acres of certified organic lands and we're standing in one of the organic blocks that's been certified for the last 15 to 20 years. So this is a long-term organic field where we conduct organic research, looking at organic corn production, soybean production, and cereal grain production. Behind me is an organic no-till soybean field. So we've been working on developing practices and strategies to reduce the need for tillage and cultivation in organic soybean production since about 2006. Not only my program, but before me, Dr. Josh Posner, a professor in agronomy. So we've been focusing on using cereal rye as a cover crop planted in the fall and then used as a mulch in the spring to suppress weeds, have soybean directly seeded into that mulch, and that being our primary weed management tool for the remainder of the soybean production season, thus eliminating the need for cultivation and soil disturbance. Organic farmers are striving to develop complete no-till methods, and right now we're not there. We're really focusing on rotational uh, reduced tillage. So looking at key phases within the crop rotation where we can eliminate or reduce tillage and cultivation passage, thus reducing soil disturbance. So this has been a very successful phase of the crop rotation where we're able to reduce tillage and eliminate the need for cultivation. So some of the key things we've learned to make um, organic no-till soybeans work. Uh, the system is very dependent on getting a good stand of your cereal grain and that cereal grain is used as a cover crops to produce a mulch that the soybeans are planted directly into the following year. So that's really um, a, a large part of your me weed management program is that cereal grain. We've typically used cereal rye. Cereal rye overwinters very well in our northern climates. It grows very vigorously. It has allelopathic properties, which are synergistic with the, the biomass to suppress weed emergence and growth. Um, but you can use other cereal grains, such as winter triticale and winter wheat. So in this system, it is absolutely critical to plant your cereal rye early enough in late summer to allow for sufficient growth and tillering to get the biomass you need to uh, suppress weeds. You see behind me, there's a few breakthrough weeds, but overall, this is a very clean field, very few weeds coming through. And that's a function of the fact that we have a very thick rye stand, um, both with respect to number of plants and number of tillers and absolute biomass that's produced. So here in Wisconsin, our recommendation is to plant the cereal rye by mid-September. So that requires thinking through your rotation and figuring out which crop you're going to plant before soybeans and get off the field early enough that allows for that mid-September planting date. The other key element is to plant the rye at a heavy seeding rate. So oftentimes with a cover crop and a cereal rye cover crop, we might be aiming for about a bushel an acre. In this application, again, where so much of the weed management success is going to be tied to the, the cover of the, the growing cover crop on the ground as well as the, the killed mulch, we need to have a heavier seeding rate. So we're bumping that up to two and a half, three bushel an acre. Um, so planting early and planting heavy are two of the key things that we've found, the key practices we found through our research to make this system work. The other element of the system that is critical is to wait until anthesis where that rye is flowering or any cereal grain is flowering. So you can see the anthers um, coming off of the head of the cereal grain and you can see the pollen shedding before we go over that with a um, mechanical termination tool such as a roller crimper. If you go in too early, that rye is going to bounce back and become um, a, a weed and a competitor itself with the soybean and potentially produce viable seed that can contaminate the soybean crop or even subsequent crops after the soybean. So waiting um, until anthesis, which typically occurs in late May, early June. Oftentimes as organic grain farmers, we're waiting a little bit later for planting anyway. So this is no different. We wanna wait a little bit longer, wait until anthesis to ensure that we're able to get a good mechanical termination of that cover crop.
So a lot of the research we've focused on over the last several years to optimize this system is tied to the planting of the soybean into the mulch. So looking at optimizing equipment, looking at seeding rate, and looking at row spacing and seeing where is the optimal balance between those factors. Be planting into that thick uh, mat of rye, we're aiming for about 10,000, 8,000 to 10,000 pounds of biomass per acre, and that is a lot of, of rye residue sitting on the soil surface. So we really need to think about optimizing our equipment to be able to get that seed down through the mulch and into the soil so we get good to seed, seed to soil contact in a good stand. So we have been looking at um, different modifications of the planter in terms of closing wheels um, and uh, down pressure um, to be able to ensure that we're getting the seed where we want it in the soil down through the mulch and we're able to get the target stands that we're, we're aiming for to, to get good soybean yields. Uh, we've tried 30 inch row spacing versus drilling. Both work. But the key is to optimize the equipment and make sure that your planting conditions, again, let that seed get through the mulch and into the soil so we get good to seed to soil contact. So either can work, um, but it really ties back to your equipment and how you're able to optimize that equipment. We are bumping up the soybean seeding rates in this system. Um, not all the soybeans are able to get down through the mulch and into an environment where they're able to germinate. So we're typically bumping up the seeding rate closer to 220,000 seeds per acre. Um, but again, with the optimization of equipment, we're able to dial back that seeding rate down to about 180. But again, not dissimilar to the typical organic systems as compared to conventional systems, we're typically going a little bit higher on our seeding rate to ensure we get a good stand and good canopy closure. So within the trials we've conducted focused on reducing tillage in the, the organic soybean system, we've compared them side by side with typical organic management. So that would include tillage for seedbed preparation, that would include one or two passes with a tine weeder, one or two passes with the rotary hoe, and then one or two passes with a, with a row cultivator. So up to about six passes of different weed management tools depending on weed pressure and soil condition. And doing that side-by-side -side comparison, we've learned a lot with respect to the performance of, again, typical organic management with cultivation versus the rolled rye system. Some of the things we've observed, um, overall, the weed pressure that we see and the weed suppression that we see within the rolled rye system has been very successful. Again, tied back to achieving the biomass that we're aiming for, about eight to 10,000 pounds per acre. If we're able to get that biomass, then we're able to get very, very good suppression of the weeds. And you can see behind me that there's a few breakthrough weeds, but overall, this is a very, very successful weed management approach. And this was a very dry year this year, but we were still able to get a, a very good soybean crop. And we find that this system can offer resilience, particularly in wet springs, where it can be very hard for an organic farmer to get out and do timely cultivations. And missing an opportunity or a window for cultivation just for a few days can really make or break the success of the weed management program. But with this system, we plant the soybeans and the mulch is our entire weed management um, our entire weed management tool for the season. So we don't have to worry about getting in there around different rain events and different soil condition to be able to cultivate. So we've actually oftentimes found better weed suppression using the rolled rye system versus the cultivated system. Again, particularly in wet springs, where getting out in the field in a timely manner can be a challenge. Um, in terms of yields, we found the yields to be very competitive. Uh, typically in our rolled rye soybean fields, uh, we see yields that can vary from you know, 40 to 60 bushels per acre. So they're typically within four to five bushels of our uh, typically organic managed field. So very good yields, um, oftentimes on par. Depending on the year, the organic no-till soybeans can be a bit depressed in yield, uh, but still, when you take into account the other savings with respect to labor and fuel and spreading management across the entire farm, um, the, the economics of the system can be quite competitive.
over the past 15 years of research on this technique at the research station, we've had very good success. But one thing we did observe was in the first three years or so, we did see more of a differential between the organic no-till yields of soybean and the typically managed soybean yields. And I attribute that to a learning curve, understanding how to optimize the system with the planting data, the cereal rye, how to optimize the equipment, and how to optimize uh, the, the planting of the soybeans themselves. So I think as we see this, this practice translate across the landscape and onto farmer fields, oftentimes farmers uh, experience that same learning curve where it takes a few years to understand how to optimize this on their own farm, how to fit it into a rotation where they can get the cereal rye planted early, how to achieve the biomass that's needed through management of the rye, through additional fertility to the rye, um, and then how to optimize the equipment for planting. So we have farmers throughout the upper Midwest that are implementing this system very successfully. But the primary challenges that I see is, is developing a rotation, developing a crop sequence where the rye can be planted early enough. Um, that we're getting that target planting date of mid-September that allows for that, that fall growth and the tillering that gives us the ground cover in the spring as well as the overall biomass that we need for successful weed suppression. The other factor that I see as a challenge is uh, getting the heavier seeding rate of rye. Oftentimes farmers think that they can dial back a little bit on seeding rate and after a number of years they may find that they can on their farm. But I would start off with the recommendation of three bushel an acre and be sure that you're able to get that nice thick stand of rye and that high biomass that's needed for successful implementation of organic no-till soybeans. So a couple of strategies that we've implemented with respect to designing rotations that allow for early planting of rye. Being in Wisconsin, we have a very large dairy industry. So we've planted this, uh, we've done this system, uh, the organic no-till soybean phase after harvesting corn silage. So we get the corn silage off in mid-September, turn right back around, plant the cereal rye, and we're able to get the cereal rye established early enough to get that tar target biomass that we're aiming for. We can also look at adjusting that rotation by putting in an earlier maturing grain variety. And there is a bit more of a window for establishment as we get south of, of Wisconsin and able to, to get that higher biomass and the, the target that we're aiming for with cereal rye. But uh, deliberately choosing a shorter season hybrid is another option. We've also come in after a harvest of a small grain, whether it be winter wheat or oat, and that opens up a window to establish the cereal rye early for the system, or we've even come in after alfalfa. So we, we know that alfalfa can be a powerful tool within the rotation to suppress weeds, and we can think about maybe altering our rotation a little, um, maybe uh, sacrificing that last uh, cutting of alfalfa, coming in, doing rolled rye um, and soybeans, and then maybe doing corn after that. And, and some farmers are still seeing a nitrogen credit after the alfalfa, even with that soybean phase in between. So we're feeling pretty confident about the implementation of organic no-till soybeans using cereal rye. Some of the newer experiments we're doing within the optimization of this specific, specific phase of the crop rotation include a side dressing with different organically approved nitrogen sources to try to get a, a boost on soybean yields within this system and overcome some of that initial nitrogen tie-up that's related to having that high biomass, high seed end ratio cereal rye, and also looking at optimization of seeding depth within the system. Um, so do we want to alter the seeding depth from um, you know, a quarter of an inch down to two inches and understanding more how that relates to the different environmental conditions that are created by the, the mulch on the soil surface. But another exciting um, phase of research that we're entering into is optimizing organic no-till corn, which is a huge interest for organic grain farmers. So we've been trying several different approaches. It's very hard with the roller crimper system in northern, um, the northern part of the U.S. because it's hard to plant the corn early enough to get the grain yields that we're targeting. Um, but we, we are looking at ways to manage cereal rye and hairy vetch through different tools such as uh, between row crimpers that allow us more extended windows for planting. And we're also trying different techniques using living mulches, specifically red clover. So coming in 
doing some, um, opening up a row with some different strip tillage techniques, and then keeping that red clover suppressed so we're able to get the corn up and above the red clover, but still having that red clover serve as a weed management tool that allows us to eliminate the need for cultivation and keeps the soil undisturbed between the corn rows. Shifting to the need for cultivation and soil disturbance for weed management is often daunting for farmers considering transition. Many conventional farmers have worked over decades to reduce tillage on their farm and the thought of bringing out cultivation tools and tillage tools back into the fields is a barrier to transition. But as we see from the field behind me and some of the other research that we're conducting at UW-Madison, as well as the farmer community that we're working with, there are some very sound and, and very successful strategies that reduce the need for tillage and cultivation and allow a transition to organic that can minimize soil disturbance and keep the carbon in the soil and, and keep the, the successful soil building techniques that conventional farmers have used into the organic grain system.